from the back of a back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. When I come home, it's game time. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. A different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Us 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. You did one very good thing. You lied. You made something up. Keep that part of your brain working, all right? We get those girls over here, your first instinct is going to be to open up, okay? To tell the truth. Fight it. Just keep it interesting. Play up your novelty. You're a 16-year-old in a bar. Why? Oh, I don't know. My father owns the bar. Uh, you got a month to live. Uh, you're an actor researching. I don't, I don't know. Improvise. Look, this is a lot of information, okay? You're the keys to the kingdom here, Nick. Yeah, I know. How many boys your age get an opportunity like this, huh? Yes. So, uh, how often do you, like, you know, like, like get somebody to, to go home with you? Every night. Oh, Just because you're not having sex, Nick, doesn't mean the rest of us are sitting around playing cribbage. What's the cribbage? It's like is 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly... We teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom classes and session. This is where we teach the tenets of Likas 101. This semester, your professor has been hell-bent on reminding you what Likas 101 is and is not. And what it is not is a place for marriage counseling. Do not confuse this classroom with the Dr. Phil show. Not here to help you improve your marriage. I'm not here to tell you what to do to get the spark back. I'm not here to tell you how to improve your relationship. Your professor does not advocate relationships or marriage. Your professor is here to tell you how to get laid. That's it. I can't make this clear enough. I think there are people in the classroom not paying attention. You're auditing the wrong class. And maybe we're getting wrong numbers. You know, the Dr. Phil show is produced right down the hall. Maybe you ought to be going over there. Seriously. This is not the Dr. Phil show. I don't give a rat's ass if you save your marriage. I say, if you have problems in your marriage, it's time to go. The exact opposite of what Dr. Phil would do in that touchy-feely, baldy way that he tries to, to fix things. Forget it. We're not here to fix things. If you've got problems in your marriage, here's a good opportunity to get the hell out. Take it. This show is about getting laid. How to do it, how to save money doing it, how to save energy, how not to waste your valuable time. That is what this class is all about. You can get laid without spending money, and especially without complimenting these bitches. Stop telling them how beautiful they are. That's like handing ammunition to your enemy. Say you're in Afghanistan looking for Osama bin Laden. And you haven't found him. What else is new? But you run into some people who look like the enemy, okay? They look like they're trying to gun you down. Do you reach into your uh, knapsack and pull out some ammunition and say, Hey, Al-Qaeda, here, take some bullets. 
Why would you tell a chick she's hot? She's the enemy. You're trying to take her down. Literally. Preferably with her legs over your shoulders. You don't want to give her ammunition. Oh, you're so pretty. I just think you're the prettiest. I, you're so beautiful. Has anybody ever told you how beautiful you are? Don't be building up their self-esteem. The first thing a woman is going to think is, my God, if this dweeb thinks I'm hot, I could probably do a lot better. Tell her the exact opposite. You've seen them come and you've seen them go. There's one important thing to keep in mind. Uh, the other night I was uh, chemically altered somehow with uh, my producer, Gary Zabransky. We were sitting out on my terrace overlooking the uh, downtown Los Angeles area and all of Hollywood. And something occurred to me, and Gary reminded me to include that in this week's lecture, and I, I thank him for reminding me. Because, guys, sometimes you get this idea that, you know, you've met a chick and you put all your eggs in one basket, all your hope that she's going to call you back, or she's going to go out with you, or she's going to have sex with you. So you kind of drop everybody else in hopes of getting this one chick to put out. And, of course, she could smell the flop sweat the stink of death on you. She knows you're desperate, so she keeps making you beg for it. And you keep begging. It's like you got a, a liver snap and you got some uh, dog sitting there. That's you. I mean, come on. Here's what Here's what Gary reminded me to tell you. Something that I said on my back porch last, uh, it was last week. And very important to add this to the conversation in this class. Guys, anytime you feel yourself getting desperate or talking to a chick and thinking, I, I, I just don't know what to do to get her to have sex with me. This may be the last chance for a girl to ever talk to me. Just remember this. More than 50% of America has a vagina. There's more where that one came from. I mean, they talk about, you know, being like a bus. You know, if you miss one, there'll be another one by in 10 minutes. There are many more vaginas than buses. i tell you what. And some of them, like like your favorite eatery, are open all night, okay? So I'm just trying to tell you. Stop being so desperate. Vaginas are in plentiful demand. They are, they are definitely out there. There are so many of them. If you miss one, there'll be another one. Anybody who I tell the girls all the time. If you, I, by the way, I've said this on the air. Before I ever said it on the air, I said to a woman, and she knows who she is. Some woman was like, well, I don't want to have sex with you until I know there's something there. You know, like you have feelings for me or something. I can't just jump into bed. I, I told her, hey, don't have sex with me. That's fine. Just remember this woman up the block and around the corner who's ready to do the heavy lifting. So you take all the time you need deciding what you want to do. But in the meantime, I'm getting it somewhere else. And you know why that infuriated her? Do you know why that infuriated her? I'm going to tell you. Because she didn't have a good argument. It's like, it's true. Any time a woman refuses to put out, it's not a problem. There's other women who will do it. There's a reason I've got a bullpen. You know, if my starting pitcher isn't getting it done, I put a call into the bullpen. Maybe I need to bring in a lefty. Maybe I need to bring in a middle relief specialist. I do it. I just want to say this to all the women out there who have gone out with me, and you all know who you are. All of you who have been coy and tried to make me wait, I just want you all to know. And I think I'm, I think this is unanimous. Every one of you who thought you were all that by telling me you weren't going to have sex with me that night, I want you to know that the second I could hear your car pulling away, 
I picked up my cell phone and called the next girl on the list. And in 100% of the cases, somebody else on my bullpen roster took a quick shower, threw on some panties, and got in the car and drove over to my place and got the job done. Some of you ladies wonder why I stopped calling you. I've had this happen, you know. I have women who say, you haven't called me in weeks. You haven't texted me. You haven't called me. Why not? You want to know why not? Because the last time I saw you and you gave me a peck on the cheek, I called somebody else and they came right over and they got the job done. Why do I need to talk to you? Why do I need to be sending you text messages? Are you kidding me? You want to think about having sex with me, ladies? Take all the time you need, because I have got quite the minor league farm system. Oh, you should see, you should see some of the rookies coming up next season. I just got the scouting report on some of the new uh, roster invitees. Tell you what. Take all the time you want, because by the time you decide to have sex... By the way, here's another message. You know, There are some of you ladies out there who over the years, you know, tried jerking my chain a little bit. Oh, our timing is always so off. Oh, this, oh, that. Oh, you know, I just started dating this other guy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Do you know how many women once... They put enough miles on the odometer that they belong on the used car lot. Do you know how many of them start calling around this time of year? And you all know who you are, ladies. I get the phone calls. I get the text messages. You're all afraid that you're going to be uh, there on Christmas with nobody. New Year's. Nobody to kiss you at midnight. So all you ladies have finally, it's like the blue light special there at Kmart. You've all decided to mark it down to half price now. Maybe you couldn't sell it at full price. So now you call me and say, it's like when they call me at the Hollywood Bowl, you know. I have tickets for jazz at the Hollywood Bowl. There's always somebody who calls me and tells me they can get me a box for world music. No doubt they tried selling that box at full price. There wasn't a lot of demand for it. So they're telling me they're doing me a big favor because I'm a past customer who expressed interest in the Hollywood Bowl. The same thing with women. There are women who in the past I had interest in who started playing that game of stringing me along and, you know, not putting out or telling me the timing was wrong, whatever. It's amazing how many of them have marked down their wares to half price now that we're in the holiday season. So many of you girls want to have a New Year's date so bad you contact me. I know, by the way, you are listening to the show. I know you are. You know who you all are. But you know what? I don't take anybody's sloppy seconds. So for all of you out there who had, you know, husbands, fiancés, boyfriends, live-ins, guys you were dating that you were really having a good time with, whatever, so you decided to put me off to the side, have me warm up in your bullpen, guess what? I don't warm up in anybody's bullpen. Other women came in and got the job done while you've been gone. By the way, this one message, well, I probably won't get to the intended receiver unless she's listening to a podcast or listening online, and that's entirely possible. Uh, I want to especially speak to the woman, and she knows who she is, from five years ago. The one who told me, don't call me here anymore and give a big show for her new boyfriend, okay? I hope you're enjoying this holiday season by yourself, sweetheart. You called me recently. Like I've been, by the way, how presumptuous. How much is somebody thinking they're all that? Five years later, they call up and they think I'm just like waiting for their phone call. You know, now that uh, now that uh, my boyfriend and I have split up, you know, I was wondering, you know, uh, what you're doing. <laughs> you think I've been sitting here for five years waiting for your call? <laughs> you're going to be all alone for the holidays. Boo freaking who. You know what you're going to do? You're going to, you're going to, uh, you go to the scoundrel's last resort. You're going to spend Christmas at your parents' house for the first time in years. 
I know what you're going to do. You're going to spend Christmas at your parents' place because you don't have a guy to be with. You were hoping to talk me into playing that part. Not happening. So, boys, you have to adopt my attitude. Anytime a chick is not ready to put out on your schedule, you have to bring somebody in from the bullpen. You don't sit there begging for her attention or sending her text messages or sending her flowers or whatever it is you're sending. Shut them down. Stop talking to them. Stop talking to them because you're banging other people. If you were banging enough other people, you wouldn't have time to be worried about whether one particular broad is going to give you what you need. Forget it. I just want to say hello to all the women out there who have been coy with me. Your professor has had to sit occasionally and listen to somebody who looks at her watch and says, Oh, look at the time. Look at the time. Maybe you better look at the calendar, you old lady. I'll tell you what. 30 is coming soon. And if you think you're going to call me at 32 with your ovaries ready to go, forget it. Not happening. (laughs) Dead serious. Now, guys, you have to adopt this attitude. During the holiday season, I've got them calling me left and right. I'm getting the emails. I'm getting the instant messages. I'm getting the text messages. Oh, amazing how many of them who were stringing me along are now ready to close the deal with me. And I'm plowing new fields now. See, the great thing about me is I don't need anybody to be there for the holidays, and that's the strength of living alone, boys. I don't need any of these broads to be there for the holidays. And they all need to be able to produce a boyfriend. They need to be able to produce, uh, uh, you know, an F buddy. They need to produce somebody to the family or to the friends or whatever. They have to produce. (laughs) Well, it's not going to be me. It's not going to be me. You're getting the idea. I wanted to give you the essence. Based on my real life experiences, you need to adopt the attitude of your professor. I am here to keep you from getting into commitment, relationships, and certainly marriage. I'm here to prevent you from spending money, time, and energy on broads who are never going to give you what you want, or at least not until the holidays when everybody else has dumped them or rejected them. And then uh, there they are in the bargain bin waiting to be picked up for nine ninety nine. You know, like uh, Spin Doctor's CD. You know what I'm talking about. So, boys, uh, if you've got questions for your professor, now is the time, ladies. If you disagree with your professor, I, as your professor, encourage a vigorous classroom debate. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. You're teaching these men how to behave badly. That's what women like. They don't get good women. They like men who behave badly. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. It's the Tom Likus Show, Likus 101. I am your professor at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let us go to Andrea. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? Do you care? I don't. Why do you ask? Oh, I have some problems with you. That doesn't answer my question. I said, why did you ask? You asked first. I did not ask how you are. I really don't care. Well, okay, we're even. I said you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. That did not imply any concern about your well-being. Okay, good. 
So. And you can be assured there is no concern, okay? Because honestly, I'm being paid to have this conversation with you right now. Uh, back at you. It's, uh, I'm not being paid, but I wouldn't want to be. Uh, I would like to answer a couple of your questions. You said that you've been waiting, or people have been calling you from five, six years ago, wanting you now because it's Christmas, blah, 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 right? Well, if you had half a brain, you'd know it was because you have money, not because you're good in bed. How do you know if I'm good in bed? Because they would have been calling you the next day. Uh, darling, there are many, darling, darling, there are many women who call me the next day. There are many women who call me the same night. Okay, and they're all hard up. They're all, oh, they're all hard up. Yes. Because if you had a clue... Why are you, you so wouldn't... bitter? Well, you're you're, no, no, why, you're so angry and bitter. You're yes, it's clear. I'm bitter. Yes, you're you are. You're telling me I'm bitter. Yes, I am. Okay, but you're sitting here saying, why tell a girl that she's pretty when you're having Correct. sex? Well, if you had a clue, which you don't, if you would tell a girl she was pretty when you were having sex, you'd probably have a lot more fun having sex. Cause no, man, no, pretty, actually, I'd, I'd have... Finish. Just no bad... No, don't tell me how to do the show, dear. I'm the host of the show, and I will let you finish when I'm good and ready to let you finish. I, uh, I really don't care if you're having a good time in bed. I only care if I am. And the way men are constructed, you know, we can have an orgasm whether or not you're having a good time in bed. So what do we care? I'm calling you then. I, I don't really care. Well, then why bring it up on radio? Because I'm I'm lording it over them that while you have nothing else I'm to lording it over them. Oh, no, bed. darling, let me tell you something. I am a multimillionaire many times over from having done this show so I'm successfully so for so long. But you still suck in bed because you can't even tell me. You, uh, yeah, you darling, like you'll never, you will never know if I suck in bed because uh, I, I can would. Tell I you right now, you suck You in are bed. so far past your expiration date, it's not funny. Really? Yes. Really? That's correct. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's... How old that, are buddy. you? You have no idea. How old are you? I'm... How old are you? Oh, I, I, everybody knows how old I am. How old are you? I'm old enough to know I could tear you up. Says here on the screen you're 38 years old. Did you lie about your age? No. <laughs> so you are 38? I am 38. Way past your expiration date. You, oh, really? Oh, yeah. And how does that make you the judge? Uh, well, because I, I've got money, power, and fame. I am the judge. Well, first of all, I have not done enough to be past any kind of expiration date. I'm sure you haven't. Nobody Thank wants you, you. And you know why? Because I am picky. Well, nobody wants you anyway, dear. Really? And by the way, you know, really? if you hold... Have... Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you know, if you hold the merchandise for too long, it's going to spoil, okay? I guarantee you. If I, need I mean, right now, right now, right now, right now, in a bakery somewhere in Beverly Hills, there's a big meringue cake. It looks and beautiful. Bob's it's probably at $125. Yeah. But you know what? If, if it sits in that window for too long, the meringue is going to start to drip. The cake is going to start to get stale. And no one's ever going to pay that price. Hey, buddy, you're a meringue pie. Hello. What? You have no idea how to treat a woman, and you never. Well, I, don't I know how to treat you. you. Thank you for your filthy mouth, too. You understand you're on the air, and no matter what you think of me, that's a violation of federal law to get on the broadcasting airwaves and to curse like that. And and we have access to your home telephone number, and I will turn it over to the federal authorities if somehow one of those curse words leaks out on the okay, air. You do that because I'm not. Don't worry, I you will. Idiot. What? I'm on a payphone. I don't care where you payphone. are. I don't care where you are. We will find you. <laughs> okay, I'll be waiting right here on the corner. Yeah. And by you. the way, now we know what kind of loser you are. Who calls from a payphone anymore? <laughs> you know, if you if, if you were the least bit in demand, mother, you'd have a stupid. you'd have a boyfriend or a husband who'd be paying for your cell phone. Hey, there ain't nobody out there that's worth my time, buddy. Yeah, well, that's that's hey, what all the homely, so fat and individuals was, like yourself always say. I'm not fat. I'm actually very good. But you're just homely. Oh, really? Yes. No, I just have more brains than you do. Sure you, you do. It. Yeah, I, you have more brains than I do. That's why I'm standing here getting a seven-figure income to talk to you and because you're smarter I'm than not. I am. Well, mm -hmm. you sure outwitted me here. Who says I'm not? I, I, I guarantee you call from a payful. Hello? Rich I, people do not use pay phones, period. Trust I mean, me, I am a rich person. I'm to you why I'm on a pay phone. Yeah, you're on a pay phone because yeah. you're poor. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, you're a... Wait, are you psychic now? Should I call Jack, you next time you know, I need to what's, know what's, what's, what's next? next? Are you going to go to the post office and buy a postcard so you can send a letter to somebody? Yeah, here, Tom, please... Shut the hell up. Oh, <laughs> you're getting desperate are. now. You're getting desperate now, aren't you? No, you are. Talking yes. to me from a payphone like a loser. Oh, 
yeah. That's right. At least I called you. I know that that was really smart. Let, let's review. I'm getting a seven figure income. You can't. While you had to pull that. over, you had to find a payphone. You had to pull over. You had to dial the number. You had to hold on for over a minute. Nope. They, yes, you did. Actually, I have it. Actually, they put me on first. But you still had to hold I did on not for. Hold. It says it right on the screen. You are holding no, for a minute uh, and four I did seconds. Not, I did not hold. Or you I was had to hold. You. It's impossible to put you on immediately. You hold. You held for over a minute. Well, you need to talk to your guy because he said Andrew. My guy had on. nothing to do with it. You you held on for over a minute. It's on the screen right here. Well, that's because you need to know what the hell you're doing wrong. I, I, oh, yes. You, you're not willing yes. to listen. And I'm going to take it from a poor, unattractive woman like yourself who had to pull over and talk to me on a pay phone. Oh, you're going to give me advice. Okay, let me give you. Single mother, desperate. No wonder you're so angry. Oh, my Lord. You know what's funny? Is you don't have a clue who I am. You, you know, don't know what I mean. You know, you you know, know your, ex, your ex-husband probably has a story to tell. Your ex-husband probably has a story. Yeah, you make a ton of money. Yeah, Why aren't I you at work? You know what? I pay him 8000 a month. <laughs> Is that alimony. so? Why do you marry such a loser? <laughs> You know, because you're, you're homely, and now that 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 I'm that homely. verifies what I've always believed. You are homely, and that is the reason why. Yeah. That's enough. That's enough vulgarity on the air. That's enough. I know you're bitter. It's difficult being out on your own with two kids, being a homely, over the hill female. I understand. I feel your pain, darling. And now we know that. You married a loser to whom you have to pay $8,000 a month alimony because you're so homely. This was the only way you could get a sperm donor to come on there and give a personal donation. You married a complete loser. And we know what we're dealing with now. We absolutely do. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's like it's 101. I am your professor. Let's go to Christina on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Yes. Hi, this is Christina. I know. I just said that. Oh, I'm sorry. I was a little nervous. How are you? You seem like you're in kind of a bad mood. No, I'm in a great mood. I just got paid to talk to that woman for 10 minutes. I know. But about how really homely and disgusting and she is. Mad, so I hope I can ask you a question and you won't be too upset with me. Um. Yeah. I. Well, I. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I'm having this problem, and someone told me that you'd be the best person to answer it for me. Mm. Um, see, I have this boyfriend, and I really like him, and he's great, but he does this thing that really bothers me, and it's when we're sleeping, I'll have a dream that I want to tell him, and I'll try and wake him up, but he just rolls over and tells me to shut up. <laughs> And I was wondering if you had an idea of what I could do to make him listen to me. You can't change anybody. Is there any tricks I can use, though, to make him listen to me? Cause Start really having sex to... with other guys. Wait, what? Have sex with other guys. I can't do that, though, because, no, because he's my boyfriend. I'm dating Well, him. at 21, you're too young to have a boyfriend, and your friend who recommended you to the show probably knew I would tell you that. No, 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 because we've and been dating for a pretty long time. It doesn't. How long you've been dating doesn't have anything to do with it. At 21, you're not mature enough to have that kind of relationship. But actually, I'm pretty, I'm pretty mature. No, you're, you're really days. not. Because you know what? If I have bad dreams, yeah, I don't care if somebody else listens to me. Okay, that's something you do when you're a little girl. Okay. But I think, Daddy, Daddy, I had a bad dream. There's a monster in my room. No, that's not what I Come mean. on, you're a little no, girl. What, what are you worried? You, you, you said you had a bad dream. But you don't even know what it's about. It doesn't matter. Really it doesn't matter what the dream is. It's irrelevant. But don't you think that if you love someone, you should listen to them? No. Really I think women them? need to shut up. I think they talk too much, like you. And I think by talking too much, they alienate the men they are with. Like no, your I boyfriend is telling you to shut up. No, I don't talk too much, Tom, at all. I think that you talk a lot because you're not listening to my dreams either. No, I, t I don't want to hear your dream. I couldn't care less about your dream, okay? But I think that as a boyfriend, you have responsibilities. No, you don't. By the way, the more you say the word responsibilities to me if I'm in a relationship with you, uh, the sooner you're going to find yourself showing the door. And your boyfriend is well on his way. He's telling you to shut up. No, he's, but 
I, Tom, you're not understanding. Did he I... tell you to shut up or not? No, he's not using those exact words. What did he say when you tried to tell him about your dream? What did he say? He told me to go away. Go away. Oh, that's so that's different from shut up. shut up, though. That's so different from shut up. No, but he was tired, and when you're tired, you say, I'm just, I don't want to. Why? Well, you just explained to me a very good reason for him to tell you to go away. But so you don't think that girls should ever tell dreams to their boyfriend? I don't think you you should wake him up to tell him. No, no, you could tell him tomorrow. Why would you wake him up for that? Because it's not like I'm waking him up at weird hours. It's like in the morning when we wake up in the morning. (laughs) Darling, you said you wake up from a bad dream. Well, I. I mean, I don't know. I think I'm sure that if you were in a relationship, you would want to communicate with your. No, I like, wouldn't. Totally the biggest problem I find, the biggest problem I find with women, and I'm not being facetious with you, is okay. that they don't shut up. Well, but why? They have interesting things to say. Your so dreams are not that interesting. You know what? They, again, this is what little girls do. They go to their daddy, daddy. I had a bad dream, daddy. <sighs> But, I, you know, men... Grow up. Be an adult. Do I have bad men. dreams? What do I got to do? Call some broad up on the telephone at 3 in the morning? I had a bad dream. I dreamed there was an earthquake and my house fell off the hill. <laughs> I mean, come on. I have bad dreams. When I have them, I wake up. I get a glass of water. I turn on the TV for a while. put myself back to sleep. That's it. Done. That's called being an adult, dear. No, I totally agree, but I think that their communication and understanding and listening... And- I, here, I, here's what I understand about you. You you can't shut up. Oh, my... I don't... That is so not true. You've been talking so much more than me. Darling, you asked me about your relationship. Why don't you try just leaving your boyfriend alone and letting him sleep? Because that's not a real relationship if you're not communicating. Darling, you know, all this talk about communicating, you make relationships sound like the work that I know they are. I mean, darling, it's not an accident that I live alone because I don't want to be told all the time how much you need to be communicating or we have to talk or any of that Why other stuff. You have to, talk you have to work at it. You have to compromise. and You have to too much work. No, it's not a lot of work. I'm such a good girlfriend. I do everything. It says for you. Everything. Uh, I'm sure you don't do everything. No, I do everything. Everything, really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, again, he doesn't want to answer that uh, call for help when you've had a dream. So now, what are you going to do about it? You can't change other people. No, but. He's not interested. No, he is interested. No, I know he's, he's not. Interested. He's I know not. He really likes me. Why? He's not interested in knowing what your dreams are. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say to that. Well, You're kind of hurting my feelings, too. Oh, but the point is, I'm telling you the truth, dear. But what is that supposed to? How am I supposed to fix the situation? You can't. Up with him? This is who he is. This is who you've decided to make your boyfriend, okay? Well, uh, I. So do you think I should find a boyfriend who listens? Well, um, certainly, if you need to have somebody who's going to listen every time you yap, I guess you better start looking. Well, I don't yap a lot. I think that you talk a lot, too, and I'm sure whoever I, you do. Darling, I talk a lot when I'm on the radio. This is a talk show. It's my job to have a conversation. When I'm at home, I'm one of the most laid-back, mellow individuals sitting in front of the fire. I don't get on the phone at night calling people. I don't I don't chat up my neighbors. I sit at home quietly in quiet contemplation. And when I have a bad dream, I take care of myself like an adult. No, I'm not saying I can't take care of myself. I just like it when my boyfriend wants to listen to what He's I have not- to interested. I think I'm creative. He's not interested. No, he, he's I not. Think that's true. I well, think then if wrong. he's interested, why won't he listen? Because he's tired and you're wrong. And he's not interested. No, he. Uh, maybe if he actually even thought, heard what it was about, because it's about a really interesting thing. It, it, no, uh, you know, not to me, it's not. <laughs> I have my own dreams. I don't need to hear your dreams. But you're not my boyfriend. That's another reason I don't need to hear your dreams. That should be his torture, not mine. Oh, my God. Why should I care about your dreams? Well, so what what do you think I should do? Darling, you either accept him for who he is or you find a new boyfriend. Can I ask you a question? Are you saying that, like, you wouldn't date someone like me? If, if if you were whining the way you are and you were uh, demanding the way you are, no, I wouldn't want a girl. I wouldn't want a girlfriend like you. No, really, really. Do you think? Well, 
I don't know, because I think there are other qualities that are important. I mean, I'm a fun person to sleep with. Uh, again, darling, <laughs> sometimes the price to be paid is too high. The price to be... Do you, do you yeah. think that's a high price to pay? There are women who are great, there are women who are great in bed who can shut their traps. I know when to shut my trap, thank you very much. You know when to shut your trap? When you have a dream. Shut up. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to shut up. Can you do it? No. I don't think that's the only problem, though. I mean, like... You probably have a lot of problems with him, but I'm telling you, this one, you're going to have to accept he doesn't want to hear about your dreams. End of story. I don't think you know what you're talking about. You're the one who told me. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Keep trying to change him. Good luck to you. Hey, what's up, what's up? This is y'all from Internet of Tom Lackey's show, Gotten with it with B.A. and Pimpati and Lackey's 101 in 2004. Just want to say what's up to the folks in the, at the show. Gary, Dino, Art, and, and the big dog, Tom. Just want to wish y'all a Merry Christmas and a prosperous, joy, and happy new year. Word. It's the Tom Lackey's show. From Hollywood. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, here comes Brian on the Tom Likes Show. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, Tom Likes. What is that in the background there? Oh no, I was just talking to my sister. Is she talking right now? No. Oh wow, well, she's right here next to me. Say hi. Hi. All right, now, dear, can you hear me? Yes. Tell her to shut up. Okay, shut up. Tom. Yes. How you doing? This is painful. Oh, you heard my situation. No, I haven't. What would make you think I'd heard your situation? You're a screen guy. Oh, my screen guy, Dean. Oh, yes, you told him all about your situation. Yes, what a shame. Sorry to hear it. Thank you for calling. <laughs> No need to talk about it. Dean already told me what he was going to say. That's it. Quite a situation, too. Sorry, the world will never know what it is. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Leah on the Tom Likes Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I had a question for you. Yes. I'm wondering how old you are. Oh, it's not a secret how old I am, dear. I'm 51. 51. Yes. Uh, I'm also curious as to know exactly what it is that you've got that's so great that money, every power, woman and fame wants it. Money, power, and fame. Money, power, and fame. And I'm pretty goddamn I, I, good in the sack, if I may say. I don't think that there are a lot of women. I mean, I, I know you don't think like that, dear, think but you, but you are... just have no idea what you're talking about because you're not at my place and see the number and variety of women that I date. Okay, this is this is another question I have. I've got a stripper um, pole in my bathroom at home. Are you kidding me? I find a little bit of hypocrisy or irony in the fact that you say that women over thirty are washed up and not useful. Yeah, they're done. The young, hold on. When the young lady that you were just talking to. Obviously, is young, but you were which quite irritated who are you, who are you talking about? Naivety and her ignorance. Naivety. So, what, you know, there. By the way, the ACLU make them take down a naivety scene <laughs> at the town square. It was in Hillsburg, California. Did you hear about that? Okay, listen. What What is it that someone that young and that ignorant or inexperienced could offer? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Well, how about better vocabulary, women, for one thing? Women above 30, you say, are washed up. Second time okay you said you that. you 19 and not have a brain. Darling, I don't want your brain, okay? I want something much further south. <laughs> so. I think we've had enough. I think we know enough. Thank you. The Tom Likas Show.